This video is all about my current favorite primitive skill, which is napping stone tools or lithic technology. When I first pick up a stone, I spend some time to look it over and identify the nappable edges or platforms which are close to the faces I'm trying to reduce. So try to strike the platforms which are below the center line and close to the face you're trying to reduce or thin down. If you hit a platform above the center line, you will most likely have an unpredictable flake or a break. Also, for the most part, I hold my stone parallel to the ground. This allows the energy to run parallel and reduce the stone evenly. This will help in preventing hinged flakes or sending a bipolar split and splitting your piece with an unwanted overshot. Notice that I'm hitting the platforms close to the bottom face, well below the center line and I'm reducing the stone with consistent and predictable flake scars. I'm also using a stone as my hammer, which works fantastic in the reduction process. Each of these flakes will be turned into another tool, arrowhead, dart point, knife, etc. So I save the larger flakes and place them to the side. I don't do much traditional abrading, but I'm consistently trimming the weaker platforms with my hammer, which does a similar job as the abrader stone. Notice the angle I am striking it with and also the force I'm using. I strike it with confidence, but also with control. I make sure to chip or nip the platform correctly and not simply swing at a large chunk and try to knock it all off. It's the perfect nip that sends the longest and most beautiful flakes. I like to use my hammer stone until the majority of the stone is reduced evenly. A hammer stone of this side can easily overshoot a flake across the entire surface area, which is great, but eventually you'll have to tone down your tool size. After my hammer stone, I like to use a moose billet, which will run flakes to about the center line of this piece. I am much quicker with the moose billet and make fast work in shaping the point as the stone talks to me and explains what it wants to be. Now that your piece is thinning down, you'll need to pay more attention to your center line. You want the edge of your point to be in the center of your piece. Remember to only strike the platforms below the center line. If you need to reduce a face, you'll need to get your edge below the center line and closer to that face in order to reduce it. This can be challenging, but the more time you spend napping, the easier the challenges or equations will become. This is my second to the last step, which is a form of indirect percussion. I strap a moose antler underneath my leg and place it directly on the platform I wish to strike. I then strike the moose antler to reduce my desired flake. This is a way to be extremely precise and solve any last minute challenges. And last but not least is pressure flaking. And pressure flaking helps you bring your edge or center line even and also helps you put the final shape on your tool.